The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Friday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got markets in negative territory. S&P is negative by more than 2% off 60 points, trading at 28.42. We got the NASDAQ off 217 points. That's 2.4% in the red, trading at 87.73. The Dow off 1.8%. 437 points in the red, trading at 23,795. You back it up to the highs that we had early yesterday as the market was in positive territory. You're actually 1,000 points below the highs that we had just early yesterday in the Dow. You back it up to the S&P. We're talking about a high of 2965 or 120 points below that price level. And talking about big moves, how about Amazon after the bell last night? Amazon gonna spend their entire next quarter's profit, usually $4 billion on COVID-19 related expenses. Their guidance now looking for anywhere from a loss of 1.5 billion to a profit of 1.5 billion for the quarter. A Little bit of wide guidance as you may expect, but delivering on revenue, total numbers about 75 billion, slight beat there. But Amazon, quite a couple days. I mean, quite a dramatic drop off we've had. We're trading at 2350. You're talking about $124 below where we were trading at yesterday. For some context, though, the expected move, about $112, I believe, on Amazon. So even with that type of action, just over the type of implied volatility that was in that stock. And if you really want to get technical about it, all you're back to is Wednesday's price action in Amazon. You back it up to some longer context of where we've been. We're going to open at about 2350 for where you are on the chart. Pretty close to the higher range it's been bouncing around in since about April 16th, right? From 1626, the recent highs we had in February were about 2185. We're going to open almost 200 points still above that level as we've accelerated higher from 1626. Revenue rising. Amazon will be all right in the long term. But man, oh man, some of the statements they had to say in terms of what they were going to spend their money on. Why not? Let's just jump into it before we even hit the charts. One of the statements in there, I actually posted it in the den last night. If you're a share owner in Amazon, you may want to take a seat. Amazon reports earnings plans to spend all Q2 profits on those expenses, estimated about $4 billion. The numbers they came in with, earnings per share, 501. The market had been looking for above $6 for earnings per share. Revenue, $75.45 billion. They were looking for 73 billion and change. Amazon Web Services revenue, 10.22 billion. Uh, and here's the quote, under normal circumstances in this coming Q2, we'd expect to make some $4 billion or more in operating profit, but these aren't normal circumstances. If you're a share owner of Amazon, you may want to take a seat because we're not thinking small. And that would be the bullish side of things, right? In terms of foregoing the profits of the coming quarter, in terms of future growth, we're not sure how far we will get in the relevant time frame, but we think it's worth trying and we stand ready to share anything we learn. Um, so Amazon's designed a team of researchers, engineers, procurement specialists um, as they're building their own COVID-19 testing and program managers to work on building incremental testing capacity. Amazon said the team is building a lab and has already begun a pilot test of frontline employees. Uh, Amazon, the second employer only to Walmart domestically in terms of the number of people they employ. Some of the four billion will also fund higher wages for workers. PPE, protective, excuse me, personal protective equipment, better cleaning protocols at facilities, and this is the key here, less efficient process paths that will allow for social distancing. Amazon, the king of process, getting it done, two-day delivery, streamlining everything, all of those things changing when you can't come within six feet of people potentially. Uh, Amazon revenue and net income numbers, net income for Q1 2020, 2.5 billion and uh, revenue 
Q1, 22, yeah, revenue on the left, net income on the right, excuse me. We come in at about 2.5 billion for net income and 75.5. You see the trend. It's a decent trend. The next quarter, though, it's going to be a tough one for Amazon. First quarter for Amazon Web Services, revenue topping 10 billion. Uh, for the second quarter, Amazon said it expects net sales to come in between 75 and 81 billion, representing a year-over-year -year growth between 18 and 28 percent. I believe the revenue numbers they just came in with a year ago, they were at about 59 billion. It's about a 26 percent rise, 28 percent rise, something like that on revenue um, on 60 billion. Imagine that taking in 60 billion in 90 days and saying I'm going to grow that number by almost 30 percent in the next year, and that's what Amazon did. Uh, it's taking longer to get things into our warehouse than out of the warehouse, he, had, he said, adding, it's unclear when operations will go back to normal. The biggest question we have in Q2 is more about the ability to service the demand and the products people are ordering in a full way. So jumping back to the Amazon action, you see where we were yesterday. As I said, we're going to open at about 23.50. The action so far this morning. And there you see the instant uh, drop to lower prices when everyone realized that Bezos was telling you to take a seat. Profits are going to go bye-bye for at least the 90 days. And then you forward to 5.30. So they release them at uh, 4 o'clock, 5.30. You get the conference call and, and no real action in terms of bouncing around between about 23.20 up to 2380, the real range of that in between about 2340 and 2360. And we're sitting right in that range right now. The other company out with earnings, Apple, quite a spike higher on the pop originally. The number they came in with, they were looking for 208 and they uh, made 205. So quite a delivery for Apple. You saw the spike to above 300. But as the markets pulled back, Apple pulled back as well. Quite a quick decline, even by 445. We were under where we closed at. And uh, from there, we've accelerated a little lower. 286, we're down about $7 on Apple shares. Checking in on some of the other FANG stocks that have reported this week. You see Microsoft shares trading lower with the market. I mean, we're down more than 2% right now in the S&P, so you're going to see some action across the board here, uh, let alone the NASDAQ right now, down actually 2.36%. So Microsoft shares, again, down from 179 to 175. Facebook, they had quite a beat. I mean, look at look at this action, right? Up to 217. We're now at 200. We closed on Wednesday at 195. They delivered some pretty strong results with the market, taking them back quickly. Google shares, they've held on to their gains. They came into their earnings at about 1240. We made it as high as 1359, currently trading at about 1325. Some of the other stocks, Netflix, 416, just kind of been sputtering around in uh, the low 400s, just putting this on. There was their earnings, the initial spike to 485, and it, you know just sputtering around above 410. You could say a little bit of a downward trend, but Netflix has had quite a run recently. You see that acceleration, just kind of um, pausing the run maybe on, on this move higher. Disney shares out with earnings next week, I believe. Disney out with earnings. Uh, we're also going to get Uber, I know. I was looking at them earlier next week. The big week of earnings next week. We also got non-farm payrolls on Friday, uh, the 8th of May. That will be a big event for sure uh, to see what happens. Weekly jobless claims now exceeding 30 million. Uh, the April jobs number going to be a big number that we maybe have never seen before. Checking in on the VIX as we wrap up the first segment. VIX right now th jumping into the shorter time frame there's your action a little bit of elevated action markets down two percent so you get the vix climbing to 39 let's see if we get a 40 handle depending on how we open stay tuned folks i'll be right back if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mortgage program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in st petersburg florida the Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
that same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is negative by 60. With we got the Dow negative by 454. Jumping into the Apple numbers, as I mentioned, Apple earnings per share 255 for the quarter. The revenue quite a beat on this revenue number, which is why you probably saw that spike right out of the gate to above 300 on Apple. Apple revenue 58.3 billion. The market was only looking for 54.5. Four billion, almost four billion dollars extra in 90 days during this environment. Earnings per share, 255. They were looking for 226. Uh, the quote there: "Amid the most challenging global environment in which we've ever operated our business, we're proud to say that Apple grew during the quarter." Apple CEO Tim Cook said during a call with analysts. Apple shares were down, though, um, quite a beat on their revenue numbers. And Apple did not issue guidance for the quarter ending in June, as it usually does. A lot of the analysts out here saying, you know, maybe they're being punished for no guidance, right? Maybe they're being punished for no guidance. It's possible. Um, I don't know how you can punish a company that just delivers a $4 billion beat on revenue for no guidance. When providing guidance, it has a lot to do with health, folks. Um, and, you know, being a business analyst is not going to tell you when this economy opens back up and the, the COVID-19 relents. You know, now there's talk of potentially a vaccine being available, hopefully by the end of the year. All this stuff, very dynamically changing. So Apple shares spiking to 301, down to about 285 right now, putting it on a five-minute chart to see the action. You can see how quick that spike was initially, right at 430 on the numbers coming out, initially right to 301, but within 10 minutes. Uh, we were trading basically in negative territory at almost 288, and we're at 286 right now in Apple. Lots of other companies with earnings out there. Jumping through the list, we have ExxonMobil posted a loss of 14 cents a share and a non 
GAAP profits. Wait, you know, this is just different accounting principles um, that they can that they can come up with. The company announced a 30% cut in capital spending and also reduced cash operating expenses by 15%. Exxon Mobil shares this morning. There's your action on their earnings. Quite a quick spike down to 43, back up to about 45.88. We're going to jump to Clorox earnings next. Not surprising, right? Bleach, bleach, bleach company reports earnings and we go higher. But we'll get into the numbers in a moment. They're the next stock in that article. But there's your acceleration. We're going to open about 192, excuse me, by 193. There you are on the chart. The recent highs we had, we were up as high as about 197. You back it up to March 18th, we were as high as 214. But check out that volatility. We made it back down to almost 160 by March 25th. Quite a run up since then. Getting into their numbers, Clorox, they earned a buck 89 a share. Clorox sales jumped 15 percent. I'm surprised it's only 15 percent because if you're not aware, you can make your own um, disinfectant, whether it's um, using bleach, water, something like that. Google it. I believe that's uh, something that you can put together for a home cleaner. Clorox bleaching things reported fiscal third quarter sales soared 15 percent. Its cleaning segment, which includes its namesake bleach and pine sole saw sales growth of 32 percent. Company also raised its fiscal 2020 forecast. Uh, just in general, people are more concerned with cleaning and keeping a clean environment, whether it's at home, whether it's in your car, whether it's at your work. Uh, earnings per share $1.89, revenue $1.78 billion. Clorox reported first. Uh, excuse me, fiscal third quarter net income, $241 million or $1.89 a share. And that's up from $187 million or $1.44. Quite a difference, right? If that was a private company and you're making $180 million, still a remarkable amount. But uh, $240, an extra $60 million almost to the bottom line. Net sales rising 15%. And Wall Street was looking for $1.67 on $1.71 billion. So I imagine they're going to be doing well for the next uh, year, possibly, or two. Jumping back to other companies, Chevron out with their numbers. First quarter profit of $1.93, which included $660 million in one-time favorable items. Revenue beat forecast consensus estimate had been $0.68 cents a share. Chevron said it is taking steps to preserve its dividend and to manage the current downturn responsibly, including a further cut in capital spending. Uh, I'm not a huge fundamentalist when it comes to oil companies and what is on their balance sheet but if you can figure out which of these companies is going to be around when crude is not trading in possible negative territory i mean crude is not going to be flirting with negative prices forever that's just not going to be happening it is a commodity with extreme value when you really think about things right um we're making the transition to electric cars so forth all of that stuff whether it's solar uh electric nuclear, um, everything. Oil is going to be around for the foreseeable future. There's Exxon from 30. You're going to open at about 46, down from 70. And as we said, Chevron shares closed yesterday at 92. You're bidding down a bit, but that's off of the low of 51.60. And why not? Since we're talking about the oil companies, check out the action in crude last night. We haven't pulled up the chart yet. I was going to get to this. But we actually made it to $20.48. That's from $10.07 early Tuesday. You back off a bit. We did trade down all the way down to almost $18. So you're having volatility in both directions. But again, check out the pop from 6 a.m. this morning at almost $18. Right now as we speak, you're up 6.2% with crude trading at $20.02. We'll keep it on the commodities and jump over to gold. Gold. A little bit of a tough day yesterday, trading from 1730. You finished the day at around 1695. From there, we've traded down about $9, but you're $10 off the lows we had at about 4 a.m. this morning on gold. I mentioned Bitcoin. Check out the volatility continuing in Bitcoin. Yesterday, we saw that spike, 2 a.m. Eastern time to 95.60. You fast forward to the trading day in Bitcoin, and we've been just jumping around to basically just under 9,000. But some context, I mean, Bitcoin's been trading with the market, which is remarkable, right? When all of this pain started, call it Valentine's Day, you had Bitcoin above 10,000 to below 5,000 to 4,200. And right now, we're still double that price point. I mean, even where we were at the end of March... It's May 1st, but where we were the end of March, so you're talking about basically a month from 6,000 up 50% to about 9,000 on Bitcoin. Jumping over to silver, silver just under $15, quite the drop off 
when the pain began in February from $19 to 1164. Talk about craziness, right? But this morning, zooming things in, there's your five minute chart. Yesterday's action, I mean, still remarkable. From almost 16 early yesterday to under 15. And right now we're under 15 at 1495 from 1482 in silver. Notes and bonds, pretty muted action. The 10 year right now, you're up one tick. You see the fall off yesterday from 139 down to about 138.26, you get the 10 year trading at 139.03. And what else we have going on as we get ready for the break? Tom did a great webinar yesterday. You can still sign up and gain access to the archive. That'll be available. You can gain instant access. Tom O'Brien, Time of the Trade All Day webinar. Check that out. Six hours of education in there yesterday. You get the book, you get the newsletter as well. And today, the last day, which is why I mentioned it, open house. Check it out, folks. You get 30 days, great action in the den. We got 40 plus people in there right now. We get usually 50, 60 people in there during the day. Trading room, everybody talking about the market. Um, you can interact with the hosts, all that stuff. Just enter the promo code OPEN at checkout. You hit subscribe. This is the last day for that. $39, you enter that promo code OPEN. You hit add code, and there's your $39 free for a month. Cancel at any time. Check it out. We've had a great turnout. For those that did sign up, thanks for taking part in that open house. It's been a great month. People at home talk about some market action. And uh, the VIX climbing back towards 40 this morning with the S&Ps in negative action. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back to finish up the pro program, see what else we have on tap. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that is transforming into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. S&P is negative by 60, just kind of hanging out, negative by 60 points for the entirety of the half hour of the program. Jumping over to some other stocks that had earnings last night. Visa down about $5. I'm going to jump through some of the equities here pretty quickly in the final three minutes. Visa down about $5. Their numbers, quarterly earnings $1.38 a share, beating estimates by $0.03 cents a share. Amgen out with their numbers, four seventeen a share. They beat earnings as well, three seventy six. Amgen shares this morning. Trading up a bit to 246 last night, but right now you're basically negative by about $2 with a bid ask. It's a wide bid ask, right around 239. So we'll open pretty much even for Amgen shares this morning. Gilead, they had their earnings last night. They've been in the press a lot with potential vaccine for COVID 19. A dollar to $1.68 a share for the quarter, 11 cents above estimates, revenue beating forecast as well, and said it's working with international partners to expand production of its drug, remdesivir, seen as a potential treatment, GILD, their shares, there's your action there, spiking higher, but pulling back this morning to 81.14 with the market as well, and MGM, they're out with their numbers, losing 45 cents a share for the latest quarter, 10 cents a share more than Wall Street was expecting, revenue also missing estimates, casinos. I mean, I have friends that uh, work in the marketing segment of a New York advertising firm that services MGM in particular, and uh, all of these casinos, you have to imagine, right? Businesses shut down, but man, oh man, talk about a drop. 34 in January to $6 for MGM. We're now at 15.65. We're gonna open down a bit on the action this morning. But whew, we'll see what happens with those. And I think you had United earnings out as well last night. You did. United down a bit with the market so far today as well. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Larry Pesavento coming up live with Trade What You See at 9 o'clock. Should be interesting Friday action. We got a week next week, next Friday, non-farm payrolls. But this Friday, we got some action in crude above $20. Gold pulling back a bit. S&P's negative by 60. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up right now.